Good morning, or really today it's good afternoon, the last Friday in July, and a perfect day to introduce you to two wonderful people from a restaurant that I visited for years, but after my last visit just recently, oh my gosh, it's the Plymouth, Pete Ryan and Tim Conlon, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, fabulous place. I'm going to have I, whoever's taking the lead tell us, Pete, I assume, about the tell us a little bit about your background, how you decided to do this, and about Plymouth, both of you. Go okay. Ahead. Okay. Uh, well, it starts off the Plymouth is named after my hometown in Plymouth, Mass. And everyone says I spell it wrong, even though I was born and raised there. But it's the it's the original spelling of the town. It was, it was spelled that way into the late uh, into the mid 1600s. Um, oh well, just recently. Yeah, I was like, it's the Plymouth. I'm like, no, it's Plymouth. It's Plymouth. It's Plymouth. Um, my background is working in kitchens for about 15 years, and then I got into teaching culinary school at a local culinary school. Did that for about 10, 12 years. And then I came to a point where I decided I wanted to open up my own spot. And um, I actually live in the neighborhood and there was nothing around here. I've lived in the neighborhood for a long time and I was kind of waiting for something to happen and nothing happened. So I decided to do it myself. So I wrangled up some, uh, some guys I had worked with before and eight and a half, well, nine and a half years ago, started building this place out. And we've been open now for eight and a half years. So it'll be nine years in November. So that's very, very lucky. Because I've been there all those years, but you know, after a while, you don't remember. Where did you teach here? Just I, uh, uh, Cook Street uh, School down on, uh, used to be on Market, the 19th of Market. And oh, I, yeah. recently they, they, they went over to, uh, where they go, the Golden Triangle, something like that. So yeah, I was down there. I was actually in their first class in 1999. And then I stuck around until 2010. Uh, yeah, so. Okay. Well, tell us about Plymouth with your Southern accent that I detect. Say that again, please. Your southern <laughs> My Southern accent? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's kind of, sort of coming out. Yeah, it comes out. Uh, uh, I talk, public speaking. Yeah. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I had a couple drinks. Or if I've talked to my family recently, I just talked to my dad. So because oh, okay. they're all still back there. So he it just he reconnects and it just comes right back. So. Okay, well tell us about Plymouth. Plymouth Mass? No. Well, Plymouth the restaurant. Okay. Um, well, we are a casual new American restaurant. Um, we uh, I emphasize the word casual. There's no white linen or anything like that here. We uh, we focus primarily on French and Italian. That's my background. Uh, the, you know, the Italians came up with it, but the French were smart enough to write it all down, really. Um, and we we serve uh, really what's happening with the, in the markets and the farms. Um, that's really our bread and butter. We go up to the Boulder Boulder Market every week. We go to the farms in Longmont and Niwot. Uh, we go up there twice a week. So this time of the year, the summer months. Uh, it really is the menu's changing all the time because the uh, the farms and the markets are really popping. Um, we uh, we try to get the best ingredients and don't screw it up. That's really what our focus is. Uh, we're small. Uh, there's only about five or six of us in the kitchen. Dedicated crew. Uh, we You're are only open. open four nights a week, right? I know. I'd only do three nights a week if I could, but um, okay. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> It's uh, it's a nice, it's a nice break. We, we've you tried can, everything. You please make it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. No, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not that smart. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we tried everything. We tried everything over the years. Uh, we began with five days, went to six days, went to seven days. Oh, really? And, yeah, and it, it just wasn't, it wasn't us. And so, just recently, in the past two years, uh, we decided to go and try the four day. Uh, service and it seems to be working very well for everyone, uh, the front of house, the back of house, um, and me. And, well, and I think it's staff because there's so little. I don't know, Tim, if you have trouble with staff, but I mean, people can't find people to work. And if it's four days, people should be happy. 
we've been very fortunate, honestly. Um, a lot, I would say about 80% of our team came back after like the, the really hard lockdown, lockdown of, of the early days of COVID. Um, and we added a few people here and there, but they were, you know, friends or coworkers of people that already worked here. So we've been very lucky. Um, and we have a, you know, four days a week. It's everyone loves that. Um, our kitchen crew, myself, chef, uh, we all work on Tuesday, but it's a shorter day. There's no service. It gives me a chance to get all of my ducks in a row for the week. It gives these guys a chance to do a ton of prep work and get ready for a good week of service. And um, our servers love the four day a week. Obviously, three days off in a row is pretty nice for everybody. So um, we, have a, we have a good crew. We have a pretty we have a good morale around here. And uh, yeah, we've been very fortunate in that regard. Well, your menu reflects. I mean, it is very casual when you go. You know, that was the first thing I've said to a ton of people there, and they've all been thrilled. But I said, don't get dressed up. You know, right. This is yeah. not, I mean, it's not inexpensive, but it's worth every penny. But it isn't a dress up fancy place. It's no, fun. but you can also, you know, um, people come in wearing suits. We have businessmen having dinners here. I didn't have, even know people own suits anymore. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people on dates uh, getting all gussied up. Um, or people just in the neighborhood walking over and they're wearing shorts and they want to sit on the right. patio and have a glass of rosé. Uh, it's that kind of place where you can, you know, you spill your wine, it's okay. You know, <laughs> you can be a little boisterous, it's okay. But it's serious business too. You know, it's serious food, it's serious service. Um, we don't take ourselves too seriously, but we try to deliver a good product on, in all aspects in regards to that. And I think people see that and they they can uh, take the plummet for, for what it is. Well, we were sitting there and some people I've never seen before in my life at a table across the way are screaming, oh, this is so good. Have you tried this? Mm -hmm. I mean, I asked for a bite, but they didn't do that. They went, what? They told me you knew me. <laughs> anyway, please tell us about the menu, some of the things on the menu now, because it's fabulous. Um, well, as I mentioned before, it, uh, the menu is driven, especially this time of year, um, by the markets and the farms. Um, we never start over, like take the whole menu and throw it out, but it's always changing. There might, uh, there's a, a pork riette that's been on since day one. It's, it'll never go away. So it's on every single menu, but we, we uh, we print fresh menus every day because we may get something. Like for example, I was up in uh, Olin Farms and I got eight pounds of green beans. So all right, so now this is going on for one night. Um, the you know the cherries and the apricots, all the first fruits products are all over the menu. Whether it's in barbecue sauce or tarts or in salads, uh, we like to say we celebrate things. So when it's, a, when it's asparagus season, for example, a couple of weeks ago, we had asparagus on like five different things, whether it was soup or salad or, or part of a sauce or something like that. Um, in regards to proteins, uh, it's salmon season right now. So we got a salmon flown in directly from the dock in Alaska. Wow, right your door. salmon was gorgeous. Right, for, right to our back door. There's no, no middleman except the UPS guy, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and it's happened quite a few times in the past couple of weeks where we've called up and say, hey, we want to get our fish. And they say, we, we don't have any. We didn't catch any. You got to wait another day. So, okay, that's the nature of uh, our menu. We're at the mercy of fishermen. We're at the mercy of uh, the weather. You know, uh, you get a hailstorm, it'll wipe out all the spinach. So um, right now, even with all the heat, uh, we're getting ready to you know gear it up on the summer squash and all the peppers. Uh, corn is hitting. I guess Munson Farms has uh, corn available this week. Uh, Monroe is going to have all of their melons, the cantaloupe, the honeydews. So. For the next four to six weeks, it's just a plethora of, of, of yeah, the tomatoes, the fruits, vegetables, you name it. This so this is the um, season that it's all so season. Yes, yeah. yeah, and it's all—it's actually off a couple of weeks this year. Seems like everything's showing up about two, three weeks later this year. But well, there's no so, climate problems. You don't worry about. No, no, no. Of course not. But it was, <laughs> yeah, it's just so hot, and it was hot and oh, windy in, yeah. the, in the spring, early spring. So, um, we're uh, you know we owe everything to. Uh, to the farmers, you know, they, they, they produce so much stuff and we're able to just go up there directly and handpick things. And also we're at the mercy because right now, some of those guys are hurting too. You know, they have issues also that impacts what they can sell us. You know? But you have the ability 
to change your menu every day. Right. And I also have the ability where I could just go on to shamrockandcisco.com and type in, <laughs> I want 10 pounds of this. But we don't do that. No, I know. That. Don't do that I, at I, all. It's, it's a lot harder, you know. <laughs> no, excuse me. It's a lot better. It, yes, but it's, it's, it's more challenging on, on the guys that do all the, all the ordering because sometimes it is what it is. If you can't get it, you can't get it. Um, I sent okay. somebody there recently, and I had had the tostado with the vegetables. Okay. Yep. Appetizer. Yep, well, I think squash. The squash. squash and, uh, yeah. Squash I, it, was, it was just fabulously delicious. Okay. And, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Okay, and the people went and got it, and I think they've made reservations already to come back. They had dinner too, but just to have that. Yeah. And your salmon's magnificent. The chicken was one of the best chicken dishes I have ever had. Awesome. Well, these guys worked really hard to come up with creative, uh, creative dishes. Well, tell them about the chicken. Or tell whoever the people who may not know. Uh, the chicken dish right now is uh, oh. I could uh, tell. Never mind. Oh yeah, I'm just trying to phrase it in a particular way. Um, you know, curried, curried yeah. lettuce that's wilted down and flatbread. That, that in and itself that, is worth getting. Uh, fruit chutney, uh, coconut flakes, uh, a little salad that goes with that has items that we're getting from the farms, whether it's cucumbers and cabbage. Um, it's it's a fun little, you know. Eastern uh, uh, voyage, and we, and we change it all the time. It's always crackling chicken, whether it's breasts or legs, but the set, as we call it, it uh, changes all the time. You know? Well, it was unbelievable. Well, thank you. So, and you always have the fish and the protein and everything like that available. Yeah, right now we're doing a uh, smoked brisket, but that'll probably change in a week or so. I was just talking to one of my chefs and he's got a hankering for some uh, smoked pork loin. Mm. Like, okay, so yeah, we'll see what happens. And I do so typically do. chicken, fish, a vegetarian entree, yeah, and a fish gonna food, whether, another yeah, pork or beef, pork, beef, beef duck. Yeah, we, we typically do four on four main courses. Which uh, in the winter good. time, we might do five. And if somebody comes in because these people are all over the world now with uh, celiac, vegetarian, oh, sure. Beef, peanuts, whatever you do accommodate. Yes, yeah, we we get requests all the time. Um, I can only I, imagine. Say that again. I said I can only imagine. Oh no, it's actually great because you know honestly, there's a implied responsibility on you as the diner to give us a heads up. Oh, I agree. You really appreciate a an email or a um, uh, or a phone call and say hey. Um, um, come in with my wife, for example, she's vegan, or my husband uh, is a celiac. Of course, thanks for letting us know, because every day we do a uh, pre-shift um, pre meeting, just like a group hug. We go over what's happening that night, any VIPs, uh, what's the menu for the night, and then also included in that um, are any kind of dietary restrictions so that we know, right. uh, I know as the owner, Tim knows as, as, uh, as the manager, all the servers know, the host knows, the back weight knows, everyone is aware that Susie, for example, is allergic to garlic and she'll be in at 7.30. So we're very proactive about making sure all the guests have a good time. Good for you. And I did notice your drinks and your wine and all that is great as well. Here. We have a wonderful, uh, we don't, she's our lead bartender, but she is very creative. She loves coming up with new cocktails. And during this time of year, she also likes to make uh, some seasonal things. So right now we have a rhubarb margarita and the rhubarb comes from one of our regulars backyards over in the islands. Oh, wow. He chops it down and brings it over and she makes what's called a shrub. So basically a, a fruit, fruit puree preserved with vinegar. Um, and it's a great cocktail ingredient. So we have a rhubarb margarita right now. And we put a new drink on yesterday that is a... Uh, a cucumber, a cucumber drink with uh, chiro, which is an aloe liqueur and sake. Um, and that's our, our new, one of our new uh, summer drinks. But Melody does a wonderful job coming up with new drinks and kind of guiding our bartenders in there in coming up with creative new, new cocktails. And um, we have a lot of support from our, our vendors who 
bring us new things to try, new spirits, uh, new brands. Um, and that, especially with wine, um, part of my routine on Tuesday is more, we don't have services. I'll sit down with a couple of reps and taste some new wine. And uh, the wine list changes just as often as the, uh, as the food menu does. So, Can I work for you? <laughs> pardon? Can I work for you? <laughs> I'm here Tuesdays at 3.30. I say this to all sorts of regulars. No one ever shows up, but um, we, uh, we, it's part of, you know, it's part of what um, Pete has done from the very beginning is keep the, everything here very dynamic. Um, and the wine list and the food menu is uh, aligned in that way. And uh, it's fun. And we, I mean, that's also part of the reason we have so many regulars who eat here. I mean, we have regulars who eat here twice a week. <laughs> Um, now, I could understand if, if I had that many days that I could get out because you walk in and you actually feel what you are, are saying now makes us just feel that you really care and you sort of know you're wanted. It's not like, here's the food, get out of here, I'm going to make some money or this, this isn't so good, but it you could tell. Thank you very much okay and now you have a patio and you do have a couple of rooms i don't know how many you see all together it's the patio it's about 60 almost 70. patio bar two dining rooms about 70 total so i would say make a reservation before you come i always tell people it's better to have one and not need it than need one and not have it because if if we're if we're booked they're we're booked. Um, well, there's no place to go if there's not really. Um, and also, as, as Pete alluded to earlier, there aren't a lot of other things in this neighborhood. So it's not like you can go down the street to a, a different restaurant and have a drink and wait. <laughs> well, if my heart's set on Plymouth, I want to go to Plymouth, even if there are three restaurants next door. And, you know, we are, we're on open table. You know, you can always call and make a reservation. Um, and it's pretty rare that. Um, you can't get a reservation, especially if you're calling a couple of days. Later. It's usually not an issue. So, and we do have, you know, occasionally we do special events and things where we won't be open, open to the public, but those are, those are all, don't happen that long. Do you do special events that the public signs up for? Yes, uh, in the winter time. So basically, once the patio we close down, the patio we'll we'll be doing wine. We do wine there basically every other Thursday. Okay. Whether they're regionally inspired or just something Pete and I come up with, uh, whether it's a we've done a New England inspired dinner, like food, clam chowder and seafood and things like things that remind us of home. So I'm also from New England. Um, and we pour whether it's a Piedmont dinner or in September, we're going to be doing a, a Spanish dinner because a friend of mine who's a, a winemaker um, in, in Spain is going to be in town. He wants to do it. How do I find out about if you uh, go to our website, you can just sign up for our mailing list. We okay. do not fill our mailing list. We do not use our mailing list for anything except for to, you know, like letting people know that uh, we're doing a wine dinner, or we're doing a rosé party, or we're doing you know what it's snowed a foot and a half, and we will be open. Um, things like that. We do not. We don't use it excessively. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, Plymouth.com, and you can just click uh, add to the mailing list, and we'll get Wait, you. Is it? I want you to give specific. The website is it the Plymouth or Plymouth? The uh, Plymouth, spelled, spelled, the Plymouth. Problem, spelled incorrectly. <laughs> dot com. P L I M O T H. Yes, I mean, please tell them. And your address is 2335 East 28th Street. We are on the corner of Josephine and 28th. Okay. Phone number. 303 oh, 297 1215. Call work very often. And uh, hours are 5 to 9 on Wednesdays and Thursdays, 5 to 10 on Friday and Saturday. Uh, and then we are, yeah, so for Wednesday through Saturday, and we close a little earlier Wednesday and Thursday. And that that is based completely on the fact that. In the last year and a half or so, people don't go out late anymore. No, you but know? they do go out early. They do go out early, and that's yeah. great. We prefer that. Um, it's always nice to be busy right at five, and uh, you know, next you know, look at your watch again, and it's nine o'clock, and you're like, okay, <laughs> we're done tonight. Well, I'm sure people are welcome, whether they just want to drink an appetizer's dinner, 
And just as an aside, I want to tell everybody to please like and subscribe to the GAB, G-A-B-B, on YouTube, and you'll see this program on that, on Facebook, and on Instagram as soon as we're done. And I work my sometimes magic, sometimes not so good, and get it up. <laughs> It's not for it's not for lack of cooking, but you too. I just want to say, Plymouth was absolutely. I I wrote it up and said, I don't know when I've had a better dinner in Denver. So, you're great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I'll let you go back to work because I hear the guys want to work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank have you, Pat. Have a great night. Last yes. of July. See you soon. Much love. Thank you. Bye.